Math 31, welcome to section 3.6. In this section, we're going to take a look at the absolute value function, and we're going to transform it, shift it up, down, left, and right. And we've talked about absolute value equations and absolute value inequalities back in chapter 2. We had those three cases when you have an absolute value set equal to a number, less than a number or greater than a number. So we're gonna review that in just a little bit before we get going on this. But by the end of this section, I wanna make sure we can graph an absolute value function. And we've seen these already. We saw them in uh, section 3.5 when we were transforming graphs, but we're gonna really focus on it here in section 3.6. And we've also already done this before. We have solved an absolute value equation, but we're going to do that this time through the lens of finding x and y intercepts. So it'll have a different application, but the same mechanics as what we talked about in chapter two. And if you remember from chapter two, the absolute value of a number is its distance from zero. So absolute values are always talking about the distance between two numbers and how far that distance might be. Um, if I had asked something like, what is the distance between the numbers 3 and 7, right? If I wanted the distance between these numbers, what we always do is we subtract those two numbers, oops, I write the subtraction symbol, and we take their absolute value. And the absolute value of 7 minus 3 is 4, and if you had subtracted them in the other order, you would have still gotten 4. So absolute values, they're always positive because we just care about distances from our center, which is typically zero. Um, we don't care if it's right or left of zero. So the absolute value just measures distance between two, two numbers. Um, so with that, I do want to review up some of the things that we had talked about before. So let me just pull this piece of paper here. And I want to remind you, we had three cases. I'm going to write case one, case two, and case three. And this was back in sections 2.6 and 2.7, where we would have something like the absolute value of x minus 5 was either equal to 3, the absolute value of x minus 5 is less than or equal. Ooh, that doesn't look like a good less than or equal. less than or equal to 3, and then the absolute value of x minus 5 is greater than or equal to 3. And these don't have to be greater than or equal to or less than or equal to. They could be strict inequalities, just a less than, just a greater than. But what this is talking about is what numbers, right? What numbers are 3 units away from 5, right? So the difference between x and 5, the distance between x and 5, when is that exactly equal to 3? When is the distance between x and 5 less than or equal to 3? When is the distance between x and 5 greater than or equal to 3? So again, to find distance between two, two values, we subtract them. The reason we put them in absolute value is because we don't care if that distance is right of a number line or left of a number line. We don't care if it's positive or negative. But just to reiterate, how did we solve these? If we had case 1, we would set x minus 5 equal to 3, or we would set x minus 5 equal to negative 3. So here I would get 8, and here I would get 2. And you can see that 2 is 3 units away from 5, right? The difference between 5 and 2 is 3, just like the difference between 5 and 8 is 3. All right, so this number is to the left of 5, this number is to the right of 5, but they're both 3 units away from 5, which is why they're showing up in my solution. When you had the case 2, that's when you made the three-part inequality and we had x minus 5 is less than or equal to 3, and at the same time it was greater than or equal to negative 3. And then I would have added 5 to all sides, left, middle, and right, and I get 2 less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 8. Because any number between 2 and 8 is less than 3 units away from 5. And here was the one that was the most convoluted. We would have to say x minus 5 was greater than or equal to 3, or x minus 5 was less than or equal to negative 3. And if you remember from section 2.7, I, I wrote them in this way because typically this will produce the larger number than this one. And you don't have to, you could go in either order. And if you ever have an expression here where the x has a negative 
sign in front of it, then then you would want to flip-flop the order you wrote the, these in. What I'm trying to say is if this had a negative here, this expression would actually produce the smaller number. All right, I don't have a negative, so I won't worry about it. But here we go, we have x would be less than or equal to two, or x would be greater than or equal to eight. So if I was gonna write these up on the number line, I would have exactly two and exactly eight. Right, so I would say my answers are squigglies, right? Two and eight. Here, if I was gonna draw the number line, I would put two and eight, and I would shade between them. If I wanted to write it up in interval notation, this would be two to eight with brackets. Here, I'd have my two and my eight, and I would shade right of eight, but left of two. And then I would have two intervals. Mine would be negative infinity to two, union eight to infinity. Now you don't need all of this for this section, but I do wanna remind you of where we were coming from. All right, so again, you find this in sections 2.6 and these two cases in section 2.7. But in 2.7, we did review that a little bit. But like I said, absolute value, it's always talking about the distance from whatever this number is. So I want all the numbers that are where I can calculate their distance from five and I need it to be at least three units, right? Here I want all the numbers. I want all the numbers that in terms of their distance from five, it's less than three units. Here I want to find the numbers whose distance from five is exactly three units. So whenever I want the distance from a number, I subtract the two numbers, put that absolute value symbol around it. Okay. So let's take a look at what we have here. I wanna show you the absolute value defined as a piecewise function. And we've seen this before, all right, but let's, let's review it. So here's the absolute value function, right? So I have my top piece and my bottom piece. And just to remind you how this works, if I was going to take the absolute value of two, all right, so that means I'm looking for f of two. If I plug two in here, two is greater than or equal to zero, right? You see the number that I'm plugging in is greater than or equal to zero, so I'm on the top piece, and that would pump out a two. And we know the absolute value of two is two. All right, and then if I had the absolute value of negative two, well, negative two is not greater than or equal to zero. It's down here on this bottom piece because negative two is less than zero. So I need to output a negative of negative two which is again, positive two, because two and negative two, right? They are both two units from zero, all right? Because that's what absolute value is talking about, your distance between two numbers. And in this case, it's two and zero and negative two and zero. All right, so with that, let's try and look at a word problem and see if we can write an absolute value expression to represent this word problem. So let me scooch this up. All right, so here we go. This says, students who score within 20 points of 80 will pass a test. Write this as a distance from 80 using absolute value notation. All right, so let's think about this. I have to score within 20 points of 80. And before we get all stuck with the absolute value notation, just start thinking about what could you score on a test and still pass? Could you score 17? Could you score 100? Could you score 52? What numbers feel like they would work? I have a feeling with this one, we could probably come up with the answer a little faster than how to write it using absolute value notation. So the variable in this problem is what you're gonna score on a, on a test. So I'm gonna write x as my variable and I'm gonna say that is a student's, and I'm gonna say test score here. Oops. And when you hear the phrase within 20, right? That means I need to be within 20 units or 20 points of 80, right here. This phrase represents the distance, right? That is what I want my absolute value to be less than or equal to. And I say less than or equal to because it says within 20. So I know I'm gonna be using less than or equal to 20 at some point. Now when I want distance, I need to take the difference between two values. So my two values, well, they're gonna be the student score and this 80. 
So the expression I'm looking for is I need the absolute value of x minus 80 to be less than or equal to 20. And then once you realize that's the expression, then I need to be within 20 units of 80. That's how you could interpret it. But when you realize that you have that absolute value inequality, you could solve it using the techniques from section 2.7. This would be a case two. So I would say negative 20 was less than or equal to x minus 80 was less than or equal to 20. And I'm gonna add 80 to all sides. And I'm looking at 60 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 100. And, and you might have come up with this solution on your own, like in your head, just thinking about it. But it's good to go through the process of realizing how this absolute value can be written up, right? The distance between x and 80 has to be less than or equal to 20. And the solution for this would be anyone who scores between 60 and 100 points. If you wanted to write it up in an interval, we could write 60 comma 100 with brackets. And that's, that's how you pass this test. All right, so with that, we're gonna flip the page and we're gonna take a look at uh, graphs of absolute value functions. I'll see you in a bit, bye.